Right, welcome to episode six of my series on IndexedDB. So what we're gonna be talking about this time is indexes. What are they, how to create them? So an index, if you're familiar with how indexes work in a relational database, that's great. It's the same sort of idea. What we're doing with an index, if you haven't worked with them ever before, an index is kind of like a different version of the data that is saved so you can quickly access things. And what do I mean by that? Well, if we here let me open up one of these, so you can see I've got these different properties. For every one of the objects, I've got these different properties. But everything in the database is just stored related to this ID. If I want to look at the data and see it sorted by the country or sorted by the name or sorted by the age, what I will do is I'll create an index for that and it'll be a sorted version of the data where the key path is that other property. So we'll be able to see it in that sorted order. And we'll actually be able to see right here in the dev tools, um, a visual representation of the index, which if you've got any confusion about indexes, this will really help you out. All right, so let's jump into the code starting with the code that we had from the previous video um, we're going into the upgrade needed function so we're listening for that upgrade needed event this is the only time where we're allowed to change the structure of the database the structure of the store so updating whatever we have for indexes or what the key path is things like that and this is triggered every time we change the version number of the database. So when we're calling indexedb open, we give a version number. And if this changes, that will trigger this function to run. So right now I'm just writing out what the old version and the new version are. I don't have to have that code there. That's just there for my own edification in the console. We have one thing that's happening right now. And I'm saying, okay, if the whiskey store doesn't exist inside the whiskey database, create it and set the ID property as the key. Okay, that's great for what we've done up until this point, but going forward in the future, there may be changes that I wanna make. And if I'm gonna change the structure, the best way for me to do this is to actually delete the old version of the store and update it. So I'm working with my test data. I've got my test data being put back every time. And what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna say, if, the object store does exist, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete it. So db delete object store. We're going to get rid of the old version of this. Now this will get rid of the old data as well as the old store. So we need to be careful about doing this. We don't want to delete data that we didn't have um, or that we don't have saved someplace else. But remember, when working with IndexedDB, we're talking about temporary data anyway. If somebody is using IndexedDB and they're on a mobile device, especially an iOS device, then after 7 to 14 days, that data is going to be deleted anyway. So don't think of IndexedDB as a permanent data storage place. Unlike a database on the server where you put it there and then you're in control of when it gets deleted. This is on the device. So this is on the phone and it is a temporary data storage. Now, once you've installed, say you're using IndexedDB as part of uh, a progressive web app, then the person is going to be sort of installing that. And I'm going to be having a, a series on that coming up shortly. When the person installs it, they're telling the device, you know, I need you to hang on to this for a little bit longer. So we can at that point treat it like it's a little bit more permanent. But if that's the case, we're not going to be changing the structure. We're not going to be changing the indexes after they're initially created. We may create new stores in the future, but we're not going to mess around with that old data. So we have our object store created. Once we have that object store created, now I'm able to add some indexes. Object store is my variable that's holding the reference to the store that I just created. And the method is create index. We need to provide a few things. So what is the name that I want to use to refer to this? 
So I've got a property called name. So I'm going to create an index called name index. This is just a naming convention that I use to name my indexes. Now we need to know what's the property. So what is the key path or what's the name of the property? Well, name is going to be the property that we're going to use. And then there's an additional options object here where we can specify things like unique. And I'm going to say false. This means that I am allowed to have duplicate values for the name property. I have a couple in my data. If we go and look at that, we can see that there are, there's one here, Lagavulin, and if I open up this last one, it's also Lagavulin. So I do have duplicate names in here. All right, so we've created the index. There it is. If I want to create more, I can do that as well. Object store, create index, and we could do one on the country, say. So country and the property that we're doing, the key path is country. And that is a string, so it does need quotation marks. And are we allowed to have duplicates? Yes, we are. So we should say unique is false. Okay, so there it is. We save that. Now, I haven't changed anything in here. We can see there's, here's the store, here's the database. If I refresh the database, nothing changes. Refresh my page, nothing changes. There's nothing showing up here, no indexes. And that's because this only takes place when we do the upgrade, remember? So if I come up here now and say version two, save, I come back and here they are. So here's the whiskey store. This is the original data. We've got those IDs being used as the key path. On my name index, the key path is the name. And you can see it is sorted in alphabetical order. Same thing here for this key path. So I use the country here, I use the name here, and the default is to use that key path that we defined, which is the ID. And these indexes are gonna allow us a little bit later to look at the data sorted by this value, by this property, and then we can provide a range. We can say, okay, from this letter to this letter, or this number to this number, or this date to this date, these are the values that I want to get back. And that's it. That is creating an index. Simple enough. So hope that all makes sense. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Uh, keep an eye open for the next episode in this series, which is going to be on using the get all command with indexes and key ranges. So just what I was describing about selecting a range of the data based on one of the indexes instead of just going to the data and using the key values. All right, so that's everything for today. Hope that uh, helps you out. And as always, thanks for watching.